Hey YouTube, just wanted to put out a quick video and let you guys know what sold for me yesterday, what I'm shipping out today, um, and more than just what sold, a breakdown of my cost of goods and what my profits actually are. Because it's great to see this big number about um, the value of what I sold, but more importantly, how much did I make? How much can you make on similar items? So. Uh, buckle up. It's not a huge exhausted list. I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven items on here, all right? So seven very basic things. Nothing tremendous sold, nothing spectacular. Um, the most expensive thing on this list is like $44. So it's basic things that you can find in your thrift stores to resell what sold for me um, yesterday. So the very first thing I want to talk to you guys about is this pair of pants. Um, I didn't go ahead and box these things up because I wanted to show them to you. These pants were actually my son's uh, pants. The brand is Paper Denim and Cloth. All right, and these are a boy's um, size 14. All right, so these were my son's. He didn't wear them. He doesn't like jeans. Comment below if your kid's the same way. And um, so I sold these and these sold, I'm gonna give you the price including shipping. So regardless of whether or not it was free shipping, um, I just wrote down the prices all in. So $13.75 for these. And I do think that I charged separate shipping. It wasn't free shipping. $13.75. Um, it's going to cost me about $7.50 to ship. My cost of goods on these were nothing. After fees, um, I will profit $3.88 from this pair of pants. That's not a huge money maker, is it? $3.88. But I tell you... From my kids' clothes, if I were to have a yard sale, I don't think I would have even got $4 out of these. So pretty close to what I would have gotten. Um, the next item that we're going to talk about, I just listed this and two days later it sold. This is, I used keywords, boudoir lamp, um, buffet lamp, uh, acrylic, prism. These are the types of things that I wrote about this lamp. So it has a hurricane glass here. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of this verbiage. And it has this um, really cool switch. But when I picked this up, I got it at an auction. It was, um, you were bidding on your choice on the table. So I paid $3 for this. And obviously in the excitement that is an auction, don't get too excited. I failed to notice that the, uh, the socket is still there, but that's it. There's no cord to this lamp. It is, it has been cut. And then, let's make matters worse, it's missing a prism. These aren't crystal, these are just acrylic prisms and they're yellowed, but it's missing one, you guys. I was pretty let down. Like, I almost just redonated this and I thought, you know what, someone may still want it. Someone may want it and not want a cord. Maybe they want to put it up on a shelf or something, you know. Uh, it's easy enough to put it back in there and my husband's an electrician, so I almost asked him to do that, but I thought, I've already spent enough, I spent $3 on this loser lamp. This loser lamp, sold within two days of listing it for $35. That's including shipping. So I took out my $3 cost of goods. It's gonna cost me $8.59 to ship that to its new home. After eBay fees, I'm gonna profit $18.86. That's after taking out my cost of goods. So I totally, like that's lunch for me and my husband if we go out on a little date, right? $18.86, I will take that. Um, the next item that I have is this purse. This purse dates back to the Jurassic age when I first started reselling. I'm kidding, but seriously, this has to be one of the very first things that I ever picked up and she has been listed forever. This is a beautiful, beautiful vintage bag. Um, Sabra, Seba, zipper on this. You can see the thrift store wrote one in there. I include pictures of stuff like that, marks like that. This is gorgeous and it has been sitting just unloved, unwanted in my store. I thought about reclaiming this myself, maybe painting on it. Like, honestly, if it hadn't sold today, I probably would do that. <laughs> but it just sold and it sold for, including shipping, $13.40. So it was $5 plus shipping. I'm gonna actually ship this for $5 so I can keep the majority of the profit here. And then my cost of goods was a dollar. Um, after everything is said and done, I will profit $5.65. So a little over five times my money on this bag that has been listed. I am not kidding you guys, for years on Poshmark and eBay both. Why did no one want this cool bag? This bag is so cool. I'm surprised my sister didn't want this bag. Like she's a flight attendant and this is very flight attendant-y, right? Um, <laughs> Comment below and tell me if you love picking up vintage luggage. I have some pieces that I'll show you guys if you want to see them. Um, but I just like shipping luggage is terrible. It's huge, right? I guess maybe I need to do like the cubic 
No, no, that would be the opposite because it's lightweight but big. So I think the best way to ship luggage because it's not super, super affordable. I feel like most of the time when I sell luggage, people end up paying what they paid for the luggage in shipping. The next item I'm going to tell you guys about, while I was at an auction, um, again, the same, very same auction. I've been doing pretty well on the, the things I picked up at that auction. I spent a total of $200 and I'm way in the profit already. And that, that auction just happened about a month ago. Um, I haven't listed everything even that I got there. I know I need to be better, right? Um, anyway, one of the items I picked up, this was again choice and I think this was choice for $5, was an entire bag of old flip phones and landlines. Nobody there wanted this, okay? So the, the choice was going first for, you know, $50, $20, $10. It got all the way down to $5 and no one wanted these and I wanted these. I sold this. Looks like a razor, but it's not. It says the Moto, uh, the Motorola Moto W755. I disclosed in the listing that this phone is a little sticky where it has like a rubbery texture. It's a little sticky. This phone sold for $25 with free shipping. I do remember that that one was free shipping. That's going to be able to go first class because when I popped it on the scale here, we're at like 14 and a half ounces. I'm going to be able to keep the box that it's in here and just put a poly bag around that. So it'll ship for $5 and 54 cents. I averaged out after this entire bag of, of phones, I probably paid 50 cents for this phone. So my profit is $15.71 on something nobody wanted at that auction. Um, that's $15.71 I didn't wake up with. All right, and I have some fabric. This fabric was actually free to me. I was um, given a an embroidery machine. I'll just be straight with you guys. I was given this embroidery machine by my ex-husband's grandma years and years ago while we were still married. And um, it's just set unused. And I promised I was going to learn how to use it, and I never learned how to use it. I sold that machine this past year um, during quarantine for over $400. And I have sold every little accessory. And then in the box, there were all these pieces of fabric. This is four different gingham and plaid fabrics, about a yard a piece. And I sold this for $20 with free shipping. I will put this, this is just over a pound. So I'm going to put this in an envelope like this. A, it'll just set right in there. Um, and so that after um, my cost of goods was just zero, my fees, my shipping, I'll profit $9.60 that I found in a box in my basement. Cost me nothing but time, $9.60. This next item that I sold, look at this cute little guy. He's so adorable. Um, a friend of mine was having a yard sale and she had all of her and her sister's old Cabbage Patch dolls. I bought every single one of them that they would sell me. Um, they sold them to me for $4 a piece. She knows what I do, so she knows that I was trying to find collectors and really good homes for these dolls. Um, so my investment for him was $4, and one of the things that she had was a whole bag of clothing, and he's stained a little bit, and an entire bag of paperwork. So I didn't really know who went with who. I lauded up the paperwork, how it looked like it went with me, uh, for me and I took pictures of everything, disclosed um, any defects. Now with um, Cabbage Patch dolls, I understand pox is a big thing. You want to look for any defects. These collectors are serious. If you see a little mark or a little blemish or a scratch, take a picture of it. Just better safe than sorry, disclose it. The buyer's getting exactly what they hoped that they were getting and you're making a good sale. This little guy has sat in my store for a while. He is so adorable. He just sold for $44 including shipping. Um, he is actually small enough that he is going to go first class. Um, I will will protect him and put him in some type of a poly bag situation probably or maybe a really lightweight box. So after my shipping, my cost of goods of $4, I'm going to make $28.88 on him. So almost $30. Um, and like I say, I bought that with a lot of those. So it didn't take a whole lot of time to source that. The very last item I want to show you guys is a little book. This book is like as thick as a greeting card. This teeny tiny little book. This um, came out of my oldest son's closet and um, this was actually given to us by somebody. They gave us an entire box of books, a family member of his from like the 70s, the 80s. Look at the artwork here. Isn't that beautiful? And um, I read them to him when he was little and you know as your kids grow older you, you have to pull this stuff out. And I thought you know what I'm just going to list 
all of those those juvenile books, all of the kids books, uh, one one at a time. Maybe I should have lotted them up. So these are just selling one at a time. They don't sell every single day, but just tiny little books like this that you could probably pick up at your thrift store for 25 cents, 50 cents. My cost of goods was nothing on this. It sold, including shipping, for $8.80. So I feel like that's really good because you could walk into a store and get a book for that, a brand new one, but you can't find a vintage one, right? I will save vintage stuff from the trash every opportunity I get. I don't care if I lost money on this book. I would have sold it. Um, $8.80 minus shipping minus my free cost of goods. I will make $4.86 on this. So a um, couple gallons of gas, right? Let's go through the, the numbers for everything. All seven items, my total cost of goods that I spent on seven items. Now, my general rule of thumb um, for sourcing is to keep my cost of goods under $5. If it's over $5, I'm thinking twice about it. My goal is always to make at least 10 times my money. I think I did that today on all of these items. I feel like um, my most expensive item cost of goods wise was the lamp. I did spend $3 on the lamp and only made $18.86 profit so I didn't quite make 10 times my money there it did sell for 10 times my money because it sold for 35 so my total cost of goods seven items was eight dollars and fifty cents that's what I spent on everything that you see here I turned that eight dollars and fifty cents into one hundred fifty nine dollars and ninety five cents in online sales now that sounds really good if you just leave it there and the numbers still sound really good but guys I didn't po profit I did not pocket a hundred and fifty nine dollars and ninety five cents after I paid um, shipping, I paid eBay fees, my total profits was huge. It was 54% of that, which I think is huge. If you can pocket 54% of what your sales are after taking out your cost of goods also, um, I made $87.44. So I turned my $8.50 into $87.44. 10 times my money, right? Um, several of these items, again, the cost of goods was free for me. I made 10.28 times my initial investment. So take that $10, take that $5. If I could encourage you to take $5 today and go to the thrift store and look for cheap items, look for scarves or ties or belts and list those few things, get free cost of goods, go to your closet. Stuff is, this is my inventory, not my actual closet, but if I'm tired of this and I want to sell it, that was a free cost of goods, especially since this was actually given to me. Look around your house and a list of things that you already have all right so you're taking your initial five dollars and i challenge you to turn it into fifty dollars reinvest that fifty dollars make that five hundred dollars you can absolutely do this i feel like there are people watching this video that are wanting to break free of this corporate job that they have or this job that they have that is basically exchanging your entire day and one day at a time exchanging your life for someone else's dream because um, they are profiting and they are making sure that all of their uh, business goals become a reality on your time. Exchanging your entire life for money is just not worth it you guys. So. If I could challenge you to do anything, it would be to start now, start with free cost of goods, keep your items low, 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 $5 or less, and uh, I challenge you to make 10 times your money on pennies, on a small investment. If you can turn $8 into $85 right now, why would you not want to do that? Why would you not want to start today? Um, I will absolutely support you in that. I did just start a new Instagram that is reseller content only. I will tag the link down below in the comments. I want you guys following me there. I want to be co-workers with you. That's why I'm giving you this free advice. Um, I think that there absolutely is room for everybody here. I know that's kind of a controversial thing to say, but there's room for everybody. There's room for you to stay home, uh, work from home, and be home with your kids as often as possible. Whatever your goal is, reselling can help you 100% reach that goal. So um, thank you so much for watching today. As always, treat your business like a business and God bless you guys.